Hello, Americans. This is Paul Harvey here to tell you that this is a rebroadcast. So take Paul Harvey's advice. When you hear a telephone number, please don't call. Now let's listen to the rest of the show. <laughs> Paul Harvey, good day. Stand by to receive our transmission. Well, you know, I don't know where you happen to be listening to the show, but around these parts, partner, around these parts, it's been kind of hot. <laughs> and I got Alan Sanders in here to uh, second that, I'll bet, because, but here's the thing about it being hot. I got a little news flash. You know how we're going, breaking news last week. Breaking news. Everything's breaking news. Here's the breaking news about it being so hot outside. It's the summertime. (laughs) People tend to forget that. They're like, oh, it's so hot. I went outside and I was sweating and I was melting and I felt like the Wicked Witch of the uh, Wicked Witch of the Wizard of Oz with a bucket of water thrown on her. Since last summer. And I'm like, (laughs) actually, that's not true because last summer was actually pretty mild. I mean, well, if we, we looked at few, we looked at all that. Yeah, we didn't have the long stretch that we had right. had the previous year of all the like, yeah. upper nineties, but, uh, eh. but especially when people come up to me that grew up in the southeast, they're like, "It's so hot yesterday. It was ninety nine degrees and the humidity was high. I was just drenched. It was terrible." I'm like, "How long have you lived here? <laughs> are you from Are you from Canada? Are you from the Antarctic? Right. Are, you, are you from the North Pole? This is kind of how it is. And some summers are worse than that. I think just the bottom line is people just kind of like to complain when it's bad, you know. When it's <laughs> really bad. People like to complain. They like to complain. <laughs> I figured, in 56 years of living, I finally figured that out. People like to complain, you know. My dad was always pointing that out. He's like, he goes, I don't know why people complain about stuff all the time. You know, do something about it. <laughs> I'm like, well, with the temperature, I, the only, what you can do about it is go inside. Right. You know, turn your air on, you know, supplement it with a fan, make it a little, you know, cooler and more comfortable for you. Wear different clothing. I saw a guy walking down the road, two got two or three people walking down uh, not too long ago. And it was one of those days last week when it was it was really freaking hot you know it was hot as heck <laughs> it was, i mean i'm not complaining warm. that it was hot i'm just stating that it was very hot outside and these these folks are walking down this road with uh and i don't know if they just and i'm like maybe they just came from work where you can't wear shorts no well they were wearing layers upon layers of clothing you know i'm like they had a had a hat on they had a they had a shirt with a with a with a jacket on and i'm like okay what i don't get not dressing Appropriately, no. now, I got schooled by my grandparents once, where I was watching a television series, and sometimes watching a western. And some of those shows, growing up, they like to keep it realistic and make things look like it was of the period. You know, if you're watching a western that was set back in the mm-hmm. in the time of Jim Dunham, <laughs> Jim <laughs> that Dunham. he talks about. Now, see, people on podcasts don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, we have a guy here on WBHF that comes on every Thursday and does stories that won Tuesday, uh, Tuesday. Tuesdays, that, uh, stories that won the West. Isn't that mm-hmm. the name of it? Yeah. And where he talks about the uh, thing how it was back in the Western days, because he's one of the main. If there was a if there was a Jedi Master. Back in the days of Wyatt Earp, Jim Dunham would have been one because he knows all about the the past like that, and he works at the Booth Western Art Museum, which is a partner of ours. But he, back in the old days, I would always get – I would go crazy watching things. I'm like, it's so hot. Why are they riding their horse with long sleeve shirts on and stuff? And and my dad and my grandfather used to say, well, you know, back in the day, number one, there was no short sleeve things. There were no short pants because it wasn't what one wore. Mm -hmm. No one knew what they were. No one knew to do that yet. And he goes, number two. Uh, it was sun protection. Right. He goes, you wear a long sleeve shirt out in the desert back in the old days because, number one, there was no sunscreen. There was no go into this building for air conditioning. There was no right. whatever. You know, they just they just didn't want to get burned I, up in the sun, so my, they wore clothing. I, I finally have won that argument with my wife because I'll go out and mow the lawn and do everything, but I wear jeans. And she says, why? You're, you're, why? I said, because I have had enough experience kicking up rocks or hitting the close edge of brush where there's a thorn bush or something. I'm not a fan of getting my legs scratched and, and nicked while I'm doing yard work. Well, that explains why you don't wear shorts doing yard work. Why don't you wear shorts just in general when it's hot in the summertime? I'm not a shorts kind of person. I've and, never been. And that would be why exactly? I've just, just never been. I mean, have you ever tried them? No, I've got some. You've got some, but you don't I wear do. them because they are cooler. Yeah, when you're hot. You don't have you don't have problems. You don't have problems with your legs, do you, or anything like that? Uh, people no, see your legs? I mean, I don't have a problem with them. <laughs> My wife does. See anything you want to talk Mine about? Still work. Anything you want to talk about with me while we're on the air? A little bit of therapy? No, I got great legs. <laughs> can be doc, can be Doctor BK <laughs> and talk about it like Doctor Laura Here's on the air. 
You get five cents. Oh, I just Lucy. thought I'd check. Because I, I was talking, I was thinking the other day, like, Alan never wears shorts, so I don't know why. I've, I've always been a jean and t-shirt kind of person. Well, they make jean shorts, cutoffs. Hmm. Can I mean, I never nude? <laughs> like from that show? <laughs> Oh, was so that? fine the movie. Arrested, arrested cut development. in the back. Oh, is it, was it in that too? There's a movie called yeah, So a, Fine where they did that. They cut him in the back. Yeah, in, this in guy the buttocks was, uh, area. He was a never nude. He even <laughs> he would always have jean shorts at the very least. He couldn't <laughs> he couldn't even take a shower without wearing. He he would never be naked. Now now at the don't get me wrong at the beach when we go to the beach I don't go without a shirt because number one I don't want to, I don't want everybody to scream. I'm like no nah, I don't want to go out a shirt and show this show this body you know and you know what I always thought even if I was built either like Crims, Chris Hemsworth or Chris Evans. If I was built like either Chris's, uh-huh. I still couldn't wear a Speedo or oh, anything no. like that. Oh, no, 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 You know, no. That, that's just terrible. Oh, no. I can't do that. Even if I had that body. Even with, even with uh, prosthetics from Mark Wahlberg's or, movie. Or, or, no. even, or even natural. Even just looking like a muscle-bound guy that's no. in shape. I still no, there's couldn't a reason do that. I won't wear, no. no, I can't do that. That's just I'm cr- wearing, cringe. I, I have the bathing suit. I cringe. That, like the Bermuda-style bathing suit where it goes right. down to your knee. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's me. Yeah. Mine goes a little below the knee. Yeah. <laughs> Believe it or not. It's got pockets in it and everything. Yeah, i got to have a place to put my, you know, the hotel key and right, stuff like that. Right, But now I wear, I wear the, tab. I wear like the nylon, you know, the, what's the stuff made out of where you're, not the cotton t-shirts, Lycra? but the kind that, that breathes. Yeah, that, that soft feeling silky kind of shirt. Mm-hmm. I wear those long sleeve ones on the beach because, oh, yeah, I, it'd be, uh. I know what you're talking I about. Don't, I don't want to burn. Even when I get into the water, I have one of those long sleeve swimming shirts on because I really don't want to get it. I got a little sun, and I spray a little sunscreen around my, around my neck, my ears, and my face, mm-hmm. and my hands, and my legs, and that's it. And I don't, every, the last five years we've been going to the beach, I've never gotten a burn. I've been, because we sit there, we have umbrellas too. So right. We that's bring, how we, we do We bring it. protection because we're going to be yeah. there. You're like us. If we're going to the beach, we're not going there for two minutes and then going somewhere else. We're no, going to be there all day. I'm not day. a sun guy. I'm a beach guy. There's a exactly. difference. I have friends that go to this beach to just lay in the sun no. for hours. I will have to, and I've been doing this already, um, because I do so much yard work. My arms are fine. Yeah. My face and neck are fine. Right. My chest and my legs are not. So what I have right. to do is I have to lay out for very short periods to let right. them get caught up. But I will wear sunscreen at the beach. I have no choice. Uh, because I burn pretty easily, and there's nothing. Yeah. There is nothing worse than a severe sunburn. No, on it's vacation. terrible. I had one of them as a kid, and I've never gotten a sunburn since the, I was. I've a kid. had the kind that was so bad you didn't want even your sheets touching you. That's no, it's terrible. And that's not fun. And I don't want to go on and vacation it's bad to do that for you. Oh, to it's very get bad. That. I mean, that could one burn might follow you into your adulthood. You never know what's inside your body that could be triggered. Triggered by uh, the sun and the radiation and whatnot. So, I mean, hey, we have an ozone layer, but, you know, stuff still gets through. No, it's I, not, will, I it's won't always be lucky enough through. to turn into Bruce Banner. I'm going to be... Uh... <laughs> You'll be dead sunburn guy. Right, exactly. <laughs> Comes back and haunts other sunburned people. <laughs> That's your power. What happened what to a Chris horrible, Sanders? What a horrible power. He likes his chicken. I don't extra know. Colonel, Colonel Sanders picked him up and <laughs> put him in a bucket. <laughs> I don't want to be extra crispy. Extra crispy I don't want to be burned. On the outside. You're the barbecue burned ends. <laughs> burnt ends. Sorry, you said that right when you were taking a drink. You're gonna spit all. I, uh, but very much will be getting my uh, getting ready for that because we're going to the beach in about a, six weeks. Now. That's awesome. We're going in September. The beach is fun. Hey, I grew up in the mountains. If you want a vacation in the mountains? That's fine. But usually you go to the opposite place where you didn't grow up. I have nothing wrong with the mountains. I just love the beach. Just PK on the air. We'll be back. And now, this message. What's this stuff? Sunscreen. It blocks the sun's harmful rays. Want some? Nope. I'm going to stay out all day and get a great tan. Look at your back. It's as red as a lobster. I don't feel so good. Hey, Stella, your friend's been out in the sun without protection. Love a neck. Next time, use the sunscreen. Wear a hat and a shirt and look for some shade when it's really sunny. A bad sunburn could make you sick and even put you in the hospital. Now we know. And knowing is half the battle. G.I. Joe! Sit, Lucky. Sit. Hey, don't forget to reward him. Huh? Don't forget his liver snaps. I don't like to give him too many treats. He can eat lots of liver snaps. They're nutritious treats you can give a dog any time. Nutritious treats? Sure, they're made with real liver, and dogs love them. So I can treat them to liver snaps any time. Treat them to liver snaps, because dogs love liver. Any time. Tony Randall and Hervé Viachez host The Big Show tonight at 9. Most illogical. Greetings, 
fellow classic TV fans, you know the wonderful thing about Tiggers is Tiggers are wonderful things, as is the immense talent of legendary voice actor Jim Cummings. Simply name a blockbuster animated film, and it's most likely Jim had a part in it. Having logged hundreds of roles and still counting, Warner Brothers, DreamWorks, Nickelodeon, and more have all capitalized on Jim's incredibly diverse voice acting skills. He began his career on television in 1985 with the company that his work is likely most known for, playing Lionel on the Disney Channel program Dumbo's Circus. Further establishing his relationship with Disney, in 1988, Cummings replaced Hal Smith, a.k.a. Otis Campbell, from Andy Griffith to become the voice of Winnie the Pooh. By the year 2000, with the release of the Tigger movie, Jim had also replaced Paul Winchell as the voice of Tigger. In 1991, Cummings took on yet another Disney role as one of his personal favorites, Darkwing Duck. He earned five Daytime Emmy nominations and took home an Annie Award for his performance. Jim also earned Emmy nods for his roles in Star Wars The Clone Wars and My Friends Tigger and Pooh. In 2018, he reprised these two beloved characters on the big screen in Christopher Robin. Cummings was hailed by the chief film critic of Vanity Fair who called his Winnie the Pooh performance Oscar worthy. The fact is, if it's a popular animated feature for the big screen, the small screen, video games, or any other sort of multimedia you can think of, you'll likely find his name in the credits. In 2020, I had the distinct honor to help induct the deserving Jim Cummings at the VoiceOver Actors Hall of Fame induction ceremony. This is Pat McCormick with your retro TV trivia from the Golden Rage of TV. You can also find me on YouTube and Facebook at Golden Rage of TV and on Twitter at Golden Rage of TV One. And now back to BK on the Air. Thank you, Pat, for that trip into the Golden Rage of TV. We do it every Saturday. Uh, I played the Jim Cummings spot because coming up, believe it or not, and I can I can say this because it's kind of a set in stone now. We're you and I are going to appear on a because uh, Pat McCormick does live YouTube broadcasts of his of his show golden rage of tv and he's focusing here on the on the, at least last week and this upcoming week on an, uh, people who do voices for animation and voiceover actors and we're going to appear on there to talk about jim cummings and um dawes butler the guy who uh, voiced uh, one of the most popular things he voiced was fred flintstone after alan reed mm. from the original flintstones i think dawes butler took over and uh, we'll not only talk a lot on the show when we're on it but i think we're going to learn a lot too because Pat McCormack and uh, Dave Sudstrom. They, as far as all of that goes, I know some of it, but they know a whole lot more now, let's than clear. I do. <laughs> this is going to be a so. trio of which there are two experts and a joker. And it's the listener's job to figure out who the joker is. I specifically, when Pat's like, hey, hey, buddy. I try to always sound like Pat when he's talking to me. You want to smile, hey, and you're smiling when you talk, right? Like, yeah. Hey, I was going to have a show this week, <laughs> wanted you to be on it. What do you think? Hey, that sounds great. What do you want to talk about? <laughs> I was thinking about Jim Cummings and R- D- Dawes guy. We're going to talk Dawes, about voiceover. Dickin, you don't know the last name. Dawes Butler. I was like, <laughs> Dawes guy. You know <laughs> I don't does. know anything about this, right? <laughs> oh, it'll be okay. It'll be fine. <laughs> right. You know I don't know anything about and this. And for those who are listening right? on radio that can't tell, Alan's doing the texting thing. I am. His, I'm literally. His hand showing me he was texting goes, him. Well, BK will be there. I'm like, okay, but why do you need me then? <laughs> oh, it'll be fun. Ah, uh, well, now I figured it out. I'm the trained monkey in the room. <laughs> you know what's funny? I asked Pat the same thing. I'm like, what do you want Alan for? Exactly. <laughs> I, I, I'm I, know I my did not li- say that. I'm, I'm a joking. big Clint Eastwood fan where I'm he says joking. man's got to know his limitations. <laughs> but you know what's funny is you're you're going to go on the program live. And this is this is like a... That's that's funny. This is no, What's funny about this is it's a YouTube video Wait, it's where live. we're on. Where we're on live. <laughs> And it looks like the Brady Bunch. We're all in these little squares. You've seen them on YouTube. These videos where more than one person are on there. Yeah. So, so we're going to be in all these squares talking. And every now and then, when someone's really got something going on, he'll switch the thing. Pat runs the whole show, and he'll switch it to whoever's talking puts them bigger in the top, and he'll go back and forth. It's really great the way that they, that they do that. So it's it's kind of like a a new thing that not well, it's new to me, but. A lot of people having the YouTube shows do that. They're on. They're on these live streaming Skype 
uh, Super Stream or whatever the one he uses or, or, a, or a Zoom or whatever the new one is that, that outdoes the others. They use this, this program to do that. And we'll be on there talking. I've been on a couple of shows already. Once talking, one talking about Star Trek, the original series with them, and it was fun. And uh, then we were on, um, I was on the Radio Labyrinth, and you were on that one. We were on that one. Yeah, but I haven't done cool. the Video Labyrinth. The Video Labyrinth, that was fun doing You've that. You've been well, spotlighted. The, pro- the problem is you, when you do the video thing, you have to, like, comb your hair and spruce up a little bit because you know, I'm like, oh, it's video. I gotta, I'm got i going to be Make seen. Sure you got a decent background. Like, right now, I don't care. I mean, i got a cap on and shorts. You know, I didn't even I didn't even get ready this morning. I just woke up and left right. the house. You don't have to worry about it. And there's no webcam in here, so I don't want one. There is on the computer, but we don't do use it. So I play that because we're going to be coming up live. We're also, I don't know if you want to talk about this, but we could hit on this as well. Uh, a little, a, a little uh, podcast that you do called The Wilder Ride might be starting back up here soon. That we're going to be recording something very Rumor patri- has it. patriotic coming up <laughs> soon. You know, we're, it's not. It's it'll be an out. It may be out in July, but we're going to work on it over the next <laughs> week or so. Excuse me, sorry. Uh, you decided to uh, fire up the old light the fuse on that whole Wilder Ride podcast I, again. I start. I did. And, <laughs> let's be clear. Did you? I've been wanting to do this for many. Well, moons. that's true. But we're going to be able. To, I we're had doing to wait a for a certain bat, a, a certain no longer bachelor to be. <laughs> Well, uh, t- tired of we, living in the honeymoon we, suite. We, we know he had to. He had to go, honey, That's honey, okay. honey. I get it. I mean, take a look. I get it. Look, That's... I know why you don't want me walking out. <laughs> but I've got responsibilities. I've got to do something now and then outside of this room. Well, I'm still in honeymoon stage too, but I still manage to record stuff. I don't know how I can multitask. Well, you're just lying to yourself. He's lying. actually in honeymoon stage. <laughs> He's still four my, months into his. Myself is the only one. Uh, the only one I lie to now <laughs> is myself. That's the only one I want to lie to. Person in the room. Most I don't want to lie to anybody else. Yeah, yeah uh, I got to lie to myself. <laughs> well, co- co- coming, will do it. coming up on the Wilder Ride podcast, which uh, uh, you and Walt sometimes do over the past <laughs> several months. Sometimes it's sometimes. one. Sometimes uh, we're going to do a patriotic web uh, mm-hmm. show about um, our our top five like. Favorite patriotic films of all time to kind of foster in uh, Independence Day. You guys, right. I guess, I guess you're going to release it somewhere around July 4th or We're going to try to get it as close as I can to that yeah. first week in July. Yeah. So that's going to be fun. But I, again, when we do lists, you know what happens. I sit down and start making a list. And I don't do it on the computer. I sit down with a pad and pencil. I like writing things sometimes because I pull it out of my brain. I'm like, okay, and this is that movie, this movie. I love this one. I love I that one. I just Google a list. And when I, well, I, do, I, I go to the computer <laughs> later to help fine-tune things to look up some things I may not know about the movie. But when I'm coming up with this patriotic list, kind of like I did do the Halloween things that we do at Halloween time, I'm looking at the patriotic movies that I love, and I'm like, oh, this this is okay. Coming up with the list is okay. Coming up with five is the hardest part, because I'm like, okay, I have all my movies for patriotic lists. I have 23 films. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, i got to whittle that down to five. How do I do that? All right, uh, get that one in, show me, and pull it, show me, pull this up here, and then an eraser, and then take that one. Right. Now I've got 13. <laughs> <laughs> I've still got more work to do, so working on it, working on it, working on it. You see the ball spot in the left side of my head right here? Mm-hmm. That's some of the hair that I pulled out. No, i got to Take that one off and what? Let's just say this: when we do it, and we we gotta, it's not we're not gonna be pressed for time on on the podcast, not really. So, we're not gonna go on for six or seven hours no. like some people do. But we want people. I'm to listen. going to probably have four or five honorable mentions just to say, listen, I didn't forget these movies. I don't want an email saying, why did Nobody you put is, this movie on your no, list? No, do you hate it? Do you really? Do you think people are gonna? Like, Oh, I'll never listen to you again for failing hey, to bring up this movie. you know what's funny? You'd be surprised at some of the emails and messages I get about things uh, sometimes. Even in my Facebook posts, I'll post something, and someone will put something so derogatory as to what I posted up there. And I'm like, this was just a movie that I posted, and you went on a, on a 16-paragraph tirade of why you didn't like it because it had a, a, the wrong car in the background. Okay, I get it. You know what I've done? Actually, I've I don't, turned off all I notifications. I have no idea <laughs> who's responded to oh. what. Well, I I don't turn them off on BK on the air, the, the Facebook page, because it's more of a public thing, and I like keeping up with what people are saying. But, yeah, on personal page, yes, I have muted, and I haven't unfriended anybody, but I've muted and turned off notifications for a plethora of people I've that never I just don't want to hear anybody, from. I've so. never had the need to. Yeah, no, I just don't do that. What's the, what's the big deal? But I did come up finally with five movies, and I'm not, I'm not going to lie to you. That list may change between now and when we go on the air. I may change something on the list before I walk into your studio to record the show. I may actually change one of the movies to another one. So, And I have a pretty good think 
a pretty good list of five patriotic films. And for me, it, it didn't necessarily have to be a war movie. It, it was just a patriotic film right. that made me feel proud. And, and where are we from? We're from the USA. So it's going to be a movie that makes me feel proud to be an American, USA patriot, mm-hmm. a, a, a oh, subject of matter of the films. Yeah, that's that's kind of one of my criteria if you that, say patriotic movie. But that's also movie. one of your movies. I'm going to bet, I'm going to bet what, right what's now that? that's one of your what, patriot. The, the Patriot of Mel Gibson? Mm-hmm. Yes, you'll just have to wait till we record to find out if it made the list well, or not. Well, if it's not Won't on your ya. list, I know Won't it's on ya. mine, so I know <laughs> so, for a fact. <laughs> it may or may not be on that rabbit. It might rabbit. <laughs> it might be on that. We're supposed but, to all come I mean, up the with... movie is called The Patriot, this is, so that's kind of hard. That helps. Um, <laughs> so. My thing, and it's my fault because I've been so busy, we were all supposed to also come up with an, a shared list so that way we can have up to three different lists of five. We've only talked about our favorite patriotic movies. Right. I forgot to share, like, well, what would be your favorite Patriot to talk about. Like, now, are we history. supposed to do that too? Because yes, I didn't do but that. But I didn't share that. Oh, you okay. were supposed to come up with your like. I want to do my top five on this, and then right. me, Walt was supposed to say, "Well, I want my top five to be on this, and then me, okay. and that way we would have three top five lists." Oh, okay. But Walt hasn't provided a list, and I haven't provided a list, so you're the only one who's taking it really serious, which well, is awesome. <laughs> just I mean, did I've it. got my movie so. one. We all agreed that we would do our top five movies, but I, right. I said to Walt, so we'd have additional content. Maybe we should have. Side care criteria as well, so that way we can all weigh in on our sure what we want as our criteria. Well, of our top five. we got we've still got a few more days before well, we I'm record. Put a text so. out during this next yeah, break here, and I'm going to say mine will be your top five kind of patriotic figures, like in oh, history. Okay, so that way it's not necessarily a movie; it could be a, a movie okay, based good, on them. Good, but just if you had to pick five people who you think stand out historically. Especially patriotically, that'll be mine. Okay, list. and that's a good thing to do because mine are, mine are just five patriotic films and personally right. and to me. And we're supposed to all do the same fine. list, okay. but we're all supposed to well, do three of the them. The patriotic figures that you come up with, I'm sure that'll spur conversation between the three right. of us anyway, so it'll, that's the we, point. We, won't be, I think. we won't be burning it's, for it content. A we'll return after these messages. We've got some makings of the star 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 we make Star Bar soft and peanut buttery, but crunchy with peanuts. We make it chewy with caramel, but creamy with milk chocolate. New from Peter Paul. Barbara, you up? Barbara, you up? I'm up now. I don't think I can sleep with this cold. My throat's kind of sore. All right, I'll get the aspirin and sucrets. Aspirin and sucrets? Aspirin for your other cold symptoms and for minor sore throat pain. Lots of doctors recommend sucrets with a medicine for fast temporary relief. I'm glad one of us can sleep. Aspirin and sucrets, a sensible way to fight winter. Give it up! Podcast Magazine presents... Hi, it's Rob Actis, host of the podcast magazine Hot 50 Countdown. Join me as I count them down from 50 to number one, the top 50 podcasts in the land as determined by you, the podcast fans. From true crime, society and culture, self-help, health and fitness, science, and every podcast category in between, the Hot 50 Countdown is here. And don't forget to vote for BK on the Air as one of your favorite podcasts at podcastmagazine.com. Driver back. It's BK on the air here. A little Paul McCartney and Wings. I'm, I'm, re, I'm playing that for a reason, and you'll find out uh, later in the program as we truck right along here with nostalgic geekiness. Run rampant here every Saturday. We have a good time every Saturday. I'm so glad that we do it. Which well, that time that we like to get together and tell you all the crazy stuff going on out in the world <laughs> when we flash the audience of the news of the weird, the strange, and the bizarre. Oh, and look at that. I have the first news from UPI. A VHS copy of Back to the Future was sold for $75,000 by Wait. a Dallas-based auction house. Why? Did you, did you, you didn't hear about this? No. But I, I had heard 
Someone, I think Susan said she read a story, VHS tapes are the new collector's item. It's so weird. Are you telling me that you built a time machine out of a DeLorean? The way I see it, if you're going to build a time machine into a car, why not do it with some style? Christopher Lloyd, who was on Taxi and Commander Krug, the Klingon from Star Trek Three, talking there as Doc Brown. You know he's going to be in the Mandalorian season, the new season. Yeah. And I have no idea who he's playing. Well, let's get back to the story here. Heritage Auctions said that the 1986 VHS tape from the collection of Back to the Future star Tom Wilson fetched the high bid uh. from a New York-based collector. The tape still was in its original shrink wrap and rated near mint by experts. Are they rating... VHS tapes now, like comic books and stuff, if they're it's still sealed and not item. played. It's like a baseball cards, trading um, cards. The final price is believed to be the highest sum ever paid for a VHS tape. The tape was auctioned alongside other VHS tapes from the collection of Wilson, who played Biff Tannen, as you remember Biff, from, and other members of the Tannen family across the time in the Back to the Future trilogy, because, you know, he played uh, other characters that were part of his family. Wilson's copy of Back to the Future 2... Part 2 sold for $16,250, and his Back to the Future 3 VHS fetched a high bid of $13,750. Wow. Now, his 1990 Back to the Future box sold for, this is like a, a later release of it, I guess, 1990, for $10,000. Quote, this is the first box set sent out from the studio of Back to the, of the Back to the Future trilogy, Heritage Auctions quoted. Now, that I guess that's why. It's the first ones, I guess. And they're yeah, from, and and it was because owned they're from by him, an actor from him, in the so movie, but still. It. Quote, the urge to open this, to uh, open the shrink wrap, to me was nearly unbearable because not only does it include Back to the Future 1, 2, and Mint, but also the documentary secrets of the Back to the Future trilogy, unquote. Now, wouldn't that be on any of the DVD subsequent releases? The, I would think. Or is it one of those where, because sometimes there's documentaries on old releases of things that they didn't re-release uh, of, of home video stuff. You so. would think with YouTube you could find someone who has exported it somewhere. Right. First of all, do you even own a VHS player anymore? I I think I still just have one, and it's in a box in the garage somewhere. It's in that box know, of stuff where it's just like, we haven't done anything with this yet, so I know I for don't a fact know. I do not. For a long time, I had it active because for a long time, there were many things that I liked owning on home uh, media that had never seen a DVD or Blu-ray release, like some older horror films, some mm -hmm. other things, just rare films that I like with uh, maybe Peter Cushing or Christopher Lee and some of that stuff. But now I don't think, other than just stuff that I had recorded on 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 a, on a, on a camera, you know, of my dad and my mom and stuff like that, which I still have in reserve, on eight millimeter high def, uh, high eight tape that I just need to get transferred to to, to a computer or something like that. So you know, like my mom's fiftieth birthday and stuff like that. I really and my dad's gone, so I really need to get that stuff of my dad transferred. You know, I don't I haven't forgotten what he looked like, but I would like to have active stuff that I could look at mm -hmm. since he's no longer here. But other than that, I don't. I haven't watched a videotape in years. Has actually looked at one. I, I mean, I don't think I've even held one in my hand nope. <laughs> for years either. So yeah, so that's uh, that's interesting that I, I don't think that they would be worth as much had they not been available from him. That Maybe that's what jacked the price that, up. That thing. doesn't hurt. Yeah. Alright, I've got the next news. So we know a lot, a lot of those unopened video games are bringing a lot of money too, like Mario Brothers I'm and stuff hearing like that. that. People like, are buying classic why? video games. I guess it's. I guess that just is going to keep happening. Like when we were kids, classic older stuff was was, was worth a lot of money. Yeah. Whatever it was on. I just have never figured out what's the collection I should actually own. Yeah. What, what should we invest in <laughs> so we can sell it? I don't have anything that's worth anything right now. Look, I've got lint. You want to see? I got a pockets full. I got a heck of a life insurance policy. So if I croak, <laughs> somebody's going to come into a lot of money. <laughs> Hopefully, you've got way. your beneficiary. It's going to. Yeah, I do. Yeah. You want to change it to me? I, gonna, I'll, I'll spend the, it wisely. The two are going to fight over it probably though. So I don't. Know. I'm not going to be around. What do I care? Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. All right. From the UPI, an Oregon elementary school unofficially broke a Guinness World Record by setting up almost 7,000 cereal boxes and knocking them over like dominoes. Wow. May Richardson Elementary School in Central Point amassed 6,877 boxes of cereal and arranged them in a line that stretched through and around the school before setting off the chain reaction of toppling. The total was more than the current Guinness World Record for most cereal... The categories. For most cereal boxes toppled in a domino fashion. I think there's a Guinness category for everything. There must be. And if there's not one for something, you can come up with a new one. 
The record of 6,391 boxes was set in 2021 by Long Beach Middle School in New York. Melody uh, Thusen, who teaches fourth grade at May Richardson, said the school was unable to apply for official Guinness World Records recognition because of time constraints. You know how you and I were trying to think of a world record that we could probably break that would be easy for us to do? And we Mm -hmm. did think of a few. Well, there's one practical one that I thought of the other day that I could probably do. There's like the, the door that leads into my home from the garage, how many times I can open it and close it. In a, like a 24-hour period or something like that, I can just keep up with it. Maybe maybe because I'm coming in and out of it anyway a lot. <laughs> so maybe opening and closing one door over and over again, maybe in my home, I could make a record but just try to do it extra, extra, extra for 24 hours. That may be one I could do. I thought about that <laughs> one. It's just a practical thing that I could do. Uh, and I'm like, open and close this door. Open and close this door. I don't know. There's a lot of things that we probably could do. We were talking about those guys that were on the air for, what, 24 hours, 48 hours straight or something? Yeah. A few uh, weeks ago. The one that last week that uh, did the a drink at so many pubs in a 24-hour right. period. Yeah. Oh, that's easy. And it was any drink. It wasn't just alcohol yeah, I could and burn drink. Through so, that. No yeah. problem. I got the next news. I just don't have the will. <laughs> you have to come I in the next have to drive. I told you if you do it, do it Friday night. I want you to come in Saturday morning after that. From UPI, a pest control company is offering homeowners in the United States $2,000 in exchange for releasing 1,000 cockroaches into their home and test out experimental pest control methods. I don't know. It might have to be a little bit more money than that. The Pest Informer, based in North Carolina, said it's seeking five to six homeowners to allow the company to release about 100 American cockroaches into their houses to test out new methods of getting rid of those infestations. The company said the trial will last for about 30 days, and the pest control team will use traditional methods to eliminate the roaches if the experimental techniques prove unsuccessful. So good. They, there's a, th- something to fall back on to get them if their but experimental go techniques don't do for it. For a month. Yep. With them in your home. Yep. The homeowner, homeowners will be paid two grand for the trial, the company said. Applications. Now, if you want to do this and you live in the area of North Carolina over there, go to their website. They're being accepted through July the 31st. That's thepestinformer.com. If you want to be part of that, check them out and see if you want to do that. <laughs> Something like that. I ask myself, is the two grand really worth it? I don't know. I don't know if I'd do that. And I'd do two grand. I'd do a movie marathon at the theater of Marvel films or whatever, or or horror films or some mm-hmm. other thing, you know, of like 20 movies or something where I could take breaks. I always say to myself, is that worth it, and can I do it? Can I do that? That's the real key. Is the $2,000 more important to me than my sanity or possibly having more roaches in my house that I can do anything with when it doesn't work? I mean, I feel better I about know. that little addendum that says if everything yeah. they try fails, we're going to hire an actual firm right. to go in there and make sure we get – no, no, they, no, they'll do it with their actual stuff that they my usually do. My yeah. worry would be – what happens if they don't get rid right. of them? Right, and, and will that work, though? I've if, knowingly I've, allowed this infestation. Because how many people, I mean, a hundred, is it a hundred? Yeah, a hundred cockroaches. I don't think I've ever even had more than, at one point, I've never seen more than, in my life, more than maybe four or five at a time. So I'm thinking a hundred of them. How could you, what are, what's a hundred percent at all? Well, those are the advanced scouts. You <laughs> don't know where the rest of them have been hiding. <laughs> what, what is a hundred percent? Can you guarantee me right. that if I see a roach like, after how that? How do I know they didn't lay eggs? If I see a roach after that, after you guarantee me, I want another two grand right. how, or something. Give me more. Roaches are tough. We steal food. Fleas are tougher. We bite people. Steal food. Bite. The toughest thing about roaches and fleas is getting rid of them. Tougher. Toughest. But now there's Raid Roach and Flea Killer, specially formulated to kill roaches and fleas dead. Raid's tough stuff. Raid. Raid Roach and Flea Killer kills roaches and fleas dead. My throat is like a desert, I'm as dry as I can be, got a thirst as big as Texas. Come on, taste the taste of wetness, take the Nesty Plunge, soak your thirst with Nesty Instant Tea. Nesty, it's the best wet yet. So taste the taste of wetness, take the Nesty Plunge. Nesty is real tea, 100% tea, no wonder it's America's biggest selling instant. This portion of the show is being brought to you by Whatever We Have in Stock Are Us, your one-stop place to shop for whatever we happen to have lying around at the time. You are listening to BK on the Air on AM 1450, FM 100.3, and online on the TuneIn Radio app. Now, 
back to a guy, he'll make you feel really young, mostly because he's so old. It's BK on the air. Yes, I'm old compared to some people, but to some people I'm pretty young, especially when we go eat at certain restaurants that we like to frequent. We walk in sometimes and when we're eating, we'll look at each other and like, do you know we're the youngest people in this place? And it made me feel kind of good that I was young there, but it also made me feel bad because I'm eating where all the old people are eating. If What's you're going, going to Blue Plate Specials at 4 in the afternoon, you should do <laughs> no, some serious self one of them was a fast food place. And I'm like, really? how come all the older season folks? Food? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Huh. Are you kidding? It's not good for you. I could show you the lip. Well, pff, I know that. <laughs> I know all that. <laughs> I don't change the I'm oil aware. in my. I don't change my own oil in my car either. No. There's a lot of things that I don't do. <laughs> my dad asked me. I say, "Why don't you change your oil in your car? You save a lot of money." I'm like, "Well, Dad, why don't you uh, diagnose yourself and don't go to the doctor? You can save a whole lot of money doing that." He's like, "Well, that's different." I'm like, "I know. I was pretty extreme, Dad, but that's, that's the point I I'm trying to make." Don't change my oil, but so. <laughs> I do diagnose myself and avoid going to the doctor. You're there just you an enigma. I'm telling you, you're a you're a guy who's a nerd geek, but you like a little bit of sports and other stuff thrown in, it's... and I and you can fix uh, mechanical things. I uh, sometimes I like it that you can do that, but I don't get you I'm sometimes. A, what's that phrase? I'm a master, uh, a jack of all trades, master of none. Yeah. <laughs> You're outnumbered at your house, even by the, with the dogs. It's all ladies at your house, right? Well, I got a couple of boy dogs. Oh, there are? Okay, I thought you at one point you had all female It was dogs. at one point. There you all go. All right, you know, we have a leftover news. Even even the male to. dogs aren't on your side <laughs> at your house. The male dogs are like, dude, I got clipped. So hey, man, as far we, as I'm concerned, we, I'm not even. We're, we're not in I'm, charge of nothing. We're done. <laughs> That's funny. Have you seen mom? <laughs> do you think we're going right. to go up against her? Yeah, don't do it. Do you have a, de- what is it? Do you, do you ever, the movie with Charles Bronson? Remember what it was called? Death Wish? Yeah. <laughs> That's what it was. My dogs look at me and go, we're dogs and we figured this one out. How yeah. come you keep arguing? I'm like, oh. Everybody's like, you, you have a dumb dog. I'm like, don't say my dog is dumb. My dog can speak dog and English. Can you? What can you yeah. speak? English? He speaks more than you do. My <laughs> he dog. He knows what I'm talking about. Oh, I got to tell you a story about this. But some, well, let, me get <laughs> oh, to okay. this let me get to this news. News. Slash. We're getting the squirrels and the Speaking dogs. Speaking of or, the last story about enjoying I cockroaches I'd keep the bugs. in your house. The bugs going. Yeah. Well, a courthouse in upstate New York was closed for fumigation Tuesday after hundreds of cockroaches were released. Check this out. During an altercation <laughs> that broke out at an arraignment, according it's to court officials. Cockroach day. Yep. The clash broke out during proceedings in Albany City Court for people for an arrest at the state capitol. A defendant who started uh, who started to film the courtroom proceedings was told to stop. In the altercation that followed, hundreds of cockroaches brought into the courthouse in plastic containers were released, according to the state court system. Ah. The bug release was being investigated while the courthouse was closed for the rest of the day for fumigation. <laughs> court officials arrested a 34-year-old woman in the audience for charges related to the altercation, wow. including disorderly conduct, obstructing governmental administration, and tampering with physical evidence. Wow. Yeah, someone's going to go actually to jail longer than probably the people yes, that were in there for the beginning with. so. Uh, she was released, and it was not immediately clear whether or not she had an attorney to speak on her behalf, quote, what transpired is not advocacy or activism. It is criminal behavior with the intent to disrupt a proceeding wow, and cause damage. Crazy. Read a statement Why? from court officials. You know, it's not that cockroaches creep me out because they're bugs. They just creep me out because they're filthy, the, what they may have on them. As and opposed to the clean bugs. Yeah, the clean bugs. <laughs> hey, I found out something about possums that I didn't know about. Did you know possums are incredibly clean? Mm-hmm. They're a clean animal, and they can't. They are an immune to rabies. They don't get them. They, and they, I'm like, that's amazing. That's amazing. And they eat Ticks, uh, yeah, thousands of ticks in your yard. And you know who has you know who has a, a couple of pet possums. She may have more now. Is a, a Susan Olson that played Cindy on the Brady mm-hmm. Bunch. She's a big uh, social media presence, and I've always been a big fan of hers. And she even had a radio talk show for a while. She may still have it. But she has she has possums. And when she was tell, putting posting stuff about it, I'm like, well, you know, I saw possums growing up as a kid, growing up in the South, and I knew a little bit about them. And I know they walk around while they're young on their back and stuff. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, they're not really the thing that people made them out to be. I mean, you know, don't approach a wild one because they'll hiss at you and probably try to either play possum <laughs> dead Which or they might bite you. You don't want them to bite you because they got big teeth. You know, the hiss is them scared. Yeah, they don't want to. They don't want. They're scared of you. And you. I don't know <laughs> if they. I mean. I guess they would if they were in mortal terror, but I would love to have some possums. I I, I, I wouldn't mind a domesticated, let alone they're having cool. A- that you just and a friend of mine had a pet raccoon once, and they get mad. Uh, it, it, local wildlife people get mad when you take a wild animal and do it that way, and they got in trouble for doing that if they find out about it. But, uh, but yeah, possums are kind of. 
They're, I, they're more cool they're than I thought they were. The they're only neat. marsupial in North America. And That's we have true. Them. Yeah, you have kangaroos over in Australia, but we have we got possums. And did you know? What, did you know what I'm talking about? It's funny. You should see how these subjects snowball into something else on the show. You mentioned kangaroo, and you and I are big dog lovers, dog owners, mm-hmm. and and I want to do a whole segment one day coming up soon of just how bad and I don't, I don't want to sound like I'm on a soapbox but it's something that that kind of ties in with nostalgia because we had the old dog food commercials in the 70s you know you had Lauren Green for Alpo had mm-hmm. his Alpo commercials you had that uh, kennel ration uh, jingle kennel ration burger time burger time and I play that on the podcast sometimes and then you have uh, what's the other one I think Kennel Ration was also the one that had the kids singing, my dog's better than your dog, and it's the Kennel because my dog eats Kennel Ration. Well, now I'm noticing uh, having a dog in the past few years, I did like a, like almost a six-month to an eight-month research on just dog foods and stuff, and there's a great website called dogfoodadvisor.com that rates dog foods and stuff, and they are not all created equal. No. If you think you're getting a good deal, see, I'm already on it now, and we're <laughs> reaching the top of the hour. If you think you're getting a good deal on dog food when you buy a 50-pound bag of dog Dog food for twenty nine dollars. You're like, oh, that's that's great. Flip it over and read the ingredients of what's in it because I found out that dog food companies can put just about anything they want on the on the outside of their bag, going fortified with beef and vegetables and and potatoes. Well, I found out that they only have to have one percent of that in the ingredient to actually put on the front it's a piece sad. of steak. So it's not. It's it's just it's misleading. And there stuff, are different so. standards based on what country is producing. That's true. That's true. Canada has much more stringent standards than we do have here in the U.S. But if if you if you look at an ingredients of a dog food and it says uh, on the back, read the ingredients, and we know ingredient lists are. They put them in the order of how much it's in there. First ingredient is what's mostly in that right. thing. If the first ingredient is corn and the second one is filler and and filler, meat and meat byproduct and, and meat byproduct, which means meat byproduct, which isn't specified what it is, meat byproduct could mean any kind of meat from any source, any way they got it in a dog food. That means a uh, roadkill that they got, uh, <laughs> slaughtered animals that that were like ground up pieces of their hooves or or their or their skulls or goofy stuff, stuff like that. Read your ingredients because uh, there are some dog foods that are better than others and mm-hmm. I, I want to I may want to do a little segment on that one day because the old way of thinking about dog food being hey, Alpo is the best, that's not so much the case anymore. Now, I can't afford $100 a bag for a dog food, but also I'm not going to buy a big bag for $10. Right. I I did some research, I did my due diligence and I looked at the mid-range ones that I could afford that were very highly rated. And, and these were highly rated by people that didn't sponsor. There weren't a sponsor on the on the thing. You know, they weren't, oh, they sponsor, so we're going to rate them high. And well, I'll give you a little hint. When you watch, you ever watch the dog shows, the dog award shows and stuff, don't. which are kind of fun? It's fun to watch the, the mm-hmm. class shows and stuff. And you'll see really big uh, signs in the background of these dog foods that are very prominent that you know of that are some of the worst ones in the world that you can mm-hmm. feed your dog. But they pay to be there, though, to right. have their banner And they put make up. you think that, oh, look at all these wonderful They're show dogs. Great. This yeah. must be the food they eat. That's not no. the food they feed those dogs. It's you really know, not. We, so. we changed to a different vet since we're on this with a few right. minutes. Yeah. And the very first thing she asked, we had our first vet appointment with one of the dogs. She goes, okay, so what do you feed your dog? Like they wanted to know. Right. And I gave the brand and I gave the thought and I said, but we also once a week, uh, whenever we see uh, green beans, canned green beans, no salt added, go on sale. Sure. We'll scoop up a bunch and we once a week, we'll put green beans in with we're, their we're doing food. the same with carrots yeah she said you are a great dog owner she goes that is great food that you're giving we knew that already and yeah. adding green beans is a great thing to do i'm so glad you did that i try to convince people to do that yeah i'm like well when they go on sale for like 50 cents a can right it's not a lot of money to supplement once a week some veggies in their diet right Right, and instead, instead of it helps with their coat, helps right. their skin, keeps their skin from itching. It's that's great. good, that's great, and, and you're right. Instead of giving my for the longest time, I'd give a dog treat treats I'd buy that were dog treats, and I started looking at, it and I'm like, okay, these dog treats, even the ones I'm buying are really well made and they got stuff in them, but they're so expensive. So then I started looking at, uh, what does a bag of baby carrots cost? And I was looking at the cost difference, mm-hmm. and I'm like. Wait, she loves these little carrots, mm-hmm. and they're good for her. Why don't I just use those for the dog treat? They're better for her, and she loves them, and I'm saving a lot of money, and they're even better for her than the dog treat. You're crazy. Are. Two of our dogs, great. but Riley, our biggest, I can give him a an ice cube for a treat. <laughs> yeah, I know what that means. She an does. She ice does, cube. She would just chew it up. It's like, I can I have another? This. I'm like, I'm giving him frozen <laughs> water. water. And she's tricking him. He's like, woo 
dad get? You guys didn't get one? I got it's one. It's something I could chew. Right. It's a chew thing. So that's right. I'm the same way sometimes. <laughs> get excited about eating stuff that's not even, you know, supposed to be a to treat. Chew. So, yeah, sure. But, yeah, this has been Dog Talk with BK <laughs> on the air. We're going to do a whole new podcast. And you know what? I could. We could do a side thing about dogs, and uh, dog owners, our personal opinions about mm-hmm. things, and come up with things oh. because dogs are, are fascinating. You know how fantastic. you and I are very, very attuned to when our, when our dog all of a sudden acts really squirrely around a person. Like, yes, as, very much so. Which happened, has only been twice in her entire life that with my dog. happened just recently. Our dog, really? who normally is, oh, never met a stranger. Oh, yeah. Met a stranger. And my wife and Ooh. I, we, and the funny thing is we talked about it on the way back. We were like, did that guy give you the creeps? And my wife was like, yes. I'm like, what made you think? And she goes, well, I felt it initially. But when, when Lila wouldn't even want to have a thing to do with him, she said, I was suddenly out. I was like, me too. Spider senses, high alert. I'm like, this guy is someone I wouldn't trust with my back turn. So the dog didn't like him, but somebody had the we, creeps I had already, too, really. I, I sensed wow. the weirdness, but I was like, I'm meeting somebody for wow. the first time. My wife, we didn't talk to each other because we met him separately. Yeah. On the way home, we were like, did, did you get a creep? Yes. I'm like, well, what? Well, when Lila, I'm like, <gasps> same thing for me. <laughs> Like I trust my dog more than I trust that person. I'll That's that. very true because my dog has done it once too. I might tell everybody when I got more time when it happened. Dogs are also they have a they have a they have a spider sense. They have a dog sense. They kind of really do. Now when she gets freaked out in the house at night and just looks at a spot on the wall and starts barking, that's when I get worried. That's so the she's like, so she's like there's, a, there's a poltergeist. We need to pull the records on this house and see what was here back in the 1800s to see if it was an ancient burial ground or something. I'm like, what is that dog barking at? Because they see more than we do. I don't know. If it's sense. always good. So speak here on the air. Ruff, ruff. We love dogs. Whoa. My dog's better than your dog. My dog's better than yours. My dog's better because he gets kennel ration. My dog's better than yours. Kennel ration burger has everything dogs need. More protein, more nourishment, less fat than hamburger. And check the label. Kennel Ration's the only burger for dogs, government inspected for wholesomeness. The only one. My dog's better than yours. Yuck! Classes. Classes Rescue Ranger. Classes. Classes Rescue Ranger. Classes. <laughs> Quiet, numbskulls. I'm broadcasting. Yeah, I'm broadcasting. (laughs) Here, there, everywhere. There's a train going by the studio, which always blows its horn ten times louder when we're on the air. But that's okay. That's just to let him know. Let us know that he's here. Let's do a little On This Day in History. It's BK on the air. We're back. June the 18th, On This Day in History in 1847, American photographer Thomas Martin Easterly takes the earliest known photograph of something. Alan, what do you think he took a picture of that no one else had ever well a lot of pictures in 1847 were kind of rare anyway what did he take a photo of in 1847 for the first time you got a guess himself has something to do with weather i'll give you a, oh, a hint a tornado no not a tornado it's a good guess though but this usually comes dust with storm. that no not a dust storm lightning oh. he caught lightning on film for the first time in oh, 1847 wow. that had to be a big it had to be lucky you, <laughs> it's like oh, oh yeah, i just asked remember how long you had to hold a, a yeah. the lens open or the the, the uh, iris open to catch i an think image. nature probably helped him out and just went okay we're just gonna have lightning right now while he's got the Which, lens open and he took a amazing. photo for the first time they posted online too and looked you know at how it. it's hard picture. I, I try to it's, capture lightning it's hard tracks. to do now even right. when you got your iphone set for uh continuous mode to get it so yeah 1959 the first telecast transmitted from the england to the united states happened on this day in 1959 wow that's an interesting date i would never have known when they did that 
television. Cast Obviously, they had transmitted from England for that, but yeah. for it to be at the across exact the pond. time across the pond, yeah. bouncing. Today on this day in history, here's a movie that you probably maybe have never seen, but it's a fantastic. I guess it's considered a western. But I'll tell you why it kind of isn't a Western. 1969, the Sam Peckinpah directed movie The Wild Bunch was uh, released on this day in history with William Holden, Ernest Borgnine. That is a fantastic movie if you've never seen it because it's kind of a movie set when the days of the West, the Western cowboy days are on their way out and the first car mm -hmm. is being shown. But these guys in this group called The Wild Bunch, they still are set in their old Western ways and they want to they do one more train robbery like on horseback uh, to, to, to do one more before they die to really get a big uh, haul. <laughs> but it's a great movie because they have to face the facts in the film. Part of that's part of the story is they're behind the times. You know, we have tele we have we have uh, we have cars with engines in them now. We don't use you know we're not we're looking back on horses and stuff eventually and we're moving forward. But they don't do that. So it's an interesting movie. If you ever seen it, it's a great western to watch. The Wild Bunch is very popular movie too. Nineteen seventy two number one on the Billboard chart. Who can make the sun rise? Ah, uh, Sammy Davis Jr. That's right. Candyman? The Candyman by Sammy Davis Jr. That'd be Willy Wonka? Made popular by Willy Wonka, but sung by someone different in the film. Mm -hmm. But uh, when I hear the Sammy Davis Jr. one, that to me is the one I heard the most on the radio mm -hmm. growing up as a kid. That was 50, yeah, year, 50 years ago. It was number one wow. on the Billboard chart, The Candyman. 1977 on this day in history, the space shuttle test model Enterprise carries a, a, a crew aloft for the first time as it was affixed to the top of a modified Boeing 747. They were testing the shuttlecraft Enterprise, which was the precursor to the, uh, the Columbia, and our space shuttle program. Part of me is kind of... Part of me loves it that the that the campaign to name the first shuttle glider test vehicle Enterprise was cool by the Star Trek fans to do that. And even in the unveiling, I think it was 76 when they unveiled it, a lot of the cast from Star Trek were on hand as the Star Trek theme was played as this big shuttle was wheeled out for everyone to see and the press was there. But also part of me had wished that they named the first, the Columbia named that one Enterprise because that one actually went into space. Went, the Enterprise yeah. never went into space. It was a glider, but it was the precursor test vehicle. So I guess you take what you can get. Why am I complaining? I don't know why. Because it's still a cool thing if you think about it. But it would have been nice if the Enterprise had really went into space. 1980. We lost somebody in 1980 on this date. Terrence Fisher, one of my favorite directors, English director, screenwriter. He, this guy directed 50 movies in his uh, career. 15 of them were Hammer Horror films, mm -hmm. meaning the first Dracula film with Christopher Lee, the first Frankenstein movie with Christopher Lee and, with Christopher Lee and Peter Cushing, several other of the Dracula sequels, the uh, Hammer's remake of uh, the uh, Phantom of the Opera he directed with Herbert Lom playing the uh, the Phantom. You know who Herbert Lom is. He's the guy that played the uh, guy that was always after Inspector Clouseau, his his boss, <laughs> Peter Seller, the guy that hated him. You you know, that's Herbert Lom, but he's a great <laughs> a dramatic actor, too. Um, golly, the, 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 Terrence Victor, Fisher directed so many films and horror films. I just thought that he had a grip on it. His movies always looked great. They had that really red Technicolor blood, which had never been seen before. Movies had been in black and white, like the Frankensteins and the Draculas before it. When they introduced that Technicolor blood in 1958 with the, the horror of Dracula with Christopher Lee, you know, we'd never seen red on screen before, and it was shocking to people back then. Terrence Fisher. Uh, on this day in 1982, 40 years ago, what was number one at the box office? Not four. We talked about, well, we... 40. Oh, sorry, 40. Did I say 40. four? I'm you sorry. said four. My brain 40. doesn't want to accept it. I know, I'd rather... I just want to accept it. It's only four years. I like that. Yeah. It sounds better. Well, it means it only be 1986 then, right? <laughs> if it's four years past 1982. Yes. We talked about it opening last weekend, but this Saturday... Uh, this this date, 40 years ago, it went to number one pretty darn quick. E.T., the extraterrestrial, was number one in the box office 40 years ago. It uh, phoned home. It did. Uh, and, and it was a super expensive collect call yeah. <laughs> because of the money that was made from that movie. Because, you know, E.T. was for a long time the, the biggest money moneymaker in the world. Uh, in 1982, on this day, a movie opened up that doesn't get a lot of respect, and I don't know why. A Clint Eastwood directed and starring role, 1982. Think of eighty two. I like to I like to throw this out for Alan to think about. Yeah. Do you think you got a guess on what movie it might be? Well, I can give you a clue if you're stuck. I'll give you a yeah, clue. Yeah, a clue to help because a, a clue is I think it really influenced Tom Clancy. Let's just say that the author Tom Clancy and maybe Tom Clancy's story, The Hunt for Red October. Huh. I'm trying to think of what submarine movie that. Well, don't think submarine. Just think Soviet 
technology oh, stolen uh, uh, sky, from somebody uh, else. Sky, sky, sky. What that's a Fox video. Fire. That's a video game, Fox Fire. and that's a book Firefox. series. Firefox. I knew if I let you go, you'll get it. I saw that in the theater. Loved I wish it. I, had. I didn't know what I was watching as a kid. Then, as I got a little older and yeah. went back and rewatched, I was like, "This is a great Cold War spy story." It is, and it's not one of your typical Clint Eastwood vehicles either. I mean, if you want vehicle, I don't mean the jet, but the movie. I saw Firefox. I wish I'd seen it in a theater because because when so I first cool. saw it on home video, I'm like, "This is an intrigue." I was like glued to the movie, wondering what's going to happen next. I thought it was so well done. Yeah. He directed it. You know, one of his directed. One films. of the things that always stuck great. with me that I, I didn't get the first time in the theater as a kid because I was a little bit younger. Firefox. The thing that stuck with me as I saw it again more and more times is that line where he goes, "These people are willing to die." They're willing to put their lives on the line because they don't want to see this happen. They don't want this technology. They, they don't want Russia to win. Right. That stuck with me as to the number of people that we don't know their stories that are helping the espionage even, world. Even the Russians <laughs> that are helping. It was, it was crazy. Yeah. It's, it's a really good movie. It is a good movie. If you've never seen that, if that's one that's fallen under your <laughs> radar, <laughs> which mm-hmm. that's what the jet does. It's one of the things that can't pick it up on radar, I think, is what, one of the special abilities. Check it out. Firefox of 1982. It opened 40 years ago today. Uh, we're running out of time, but I'll tell you whose birthday it is when we come back and what national, what's National Fishing Day today. I'll just say that right now and get that out of the way. Something that I never enjoyed as a kid because I was forced to do it. It's like, we're going fishing, and you're going to fish. I'm like, I don't want to sit here and fish. I'd rather be doing something else. But I can understand the fun and the serenity of it as I get older. Be down there. We'll have more birthdays and stuff on this day when we come back. It's the fishing invention of the century. There's never been anything like it. Popeil's Pocket Fishermen. Men, women, youngsters can cast almost like experts the very first time. Small enough to fit in glove compartment, backpack, any travel bag, or even in your pocket. And Pocket Fisherman's handle is its own mini tackle box. Flip up the special DuPont nylon rod and you're ready to fish anytime. Even catch big ones like this with heavy test line and your favorite lure and shock absorber. Pocket Fisherman is made with a smooth action Johnson spin casting reel filled with Trilene XL line and boy does it catch fish. It's the perfect outfit for casting in tight spots. You can even hang it on your belt. Expert or amateur will love Popeil's Pocket Fisherman. It's rod, reel, line, bobber, hook, the whole thing. Yes, it's fishing fun for the whole family and only nineteen ninety five. What a gift. Ooh, lollipops, blow pops, ooh, bubble gum, blow pops, ooh, and you can choose just one. Charms, blow pops, make it lots of fun. Cause the great charms, lollipops, are soft bubble gum. They're made by charms in lots of juicy flavors. You love every one. Lollipops, soft bubble gum, charms blow pops are two treats in one. Two great American treats in one. Low pops from charms. We now return to our program. Hey, we're back. It's BK on the air here having a good time. Let's go through the birthdays today. It is someone's birthday. We ran a little long at the last uh, segment. Today is Bud Collier's birthday. This guy voiced Superman and Clark Kent on the radio plays back in the 30s and 40s. He voiced Superman and Clark Kent in the Filmation cartoon in the 60s. And he's also uh, the host of Beat the Clock to Tell the Truth. And he did a lot of uh, MC hosting back in the day. He died in 1969. So Bud Collier, he was a great... uh, a great voiceover guy, which, you know, we're going to talk about voiceovers here pretty soon on another podcast. Today is, and funny, we were talking about cockroaches today Uh-oh. in two different stories in um, in our news flashes. Because today is E.G. Marshall's birthday hmm. actor. You may remember E.G. Marshall. His name was Everett Eugene Gruns. I uh, see why he changed his name. Uh, he was in 12 Angry Men, the original movie. He was in the Defenders television series. He played the president in Superman 2. That's where you may remember him from. He also played the guy with the cockroaches in Creep Show, the movie mm-hmm. Creep Show. That's E.G. Marshall, which was. I loved the first movie, uh, the, the first story in the Creep Show about the, the, uh, the Yeti and the crate, which was a great. Uh, short in the film, mm-hmm. but but uh, the, they're creeping up on you segment, the last story about E.G. Marshall being obsessed with the bugs and stuff, that was creepy. 
and watching those cockroaches take over him at the end and, and then kill him. And then at the end, he's lying there and his body starts to shake and they start coming out of his mouth, and his ears and everything in his robe. That was creepy oh, as heck. For that movie, Creep Show is just creepy. That was one of the most iconic things. <laughs> Everyone talked about that oh, moment. It was like, just that sticks with you creep. forever. Creep Show was aptly named. E.G. Marshall died in 1998, but not of cockroaches. Uh, today is, and I played a little Paul McCartney and Wings earlier when we came back from a break. Today is Sir Paul McCartney's birthday. Today. Didn't he just get done playing in Atlanta? I don't. I think he did. Yeah, because some yeah. of my friends went to see him. Yeah, he just. Uh, I don't have five hundred dollars lying around. For a oh, really? They, they, did they go? Did, was that a discount? I don't. That know. was a discounted one. That I think may it was have been, a thousand. That may have been a nosebleed. That may have been the <laughs> buy at the door. He's he's at the, he's at the uh, yeah. That's across the street. You're watching it on a video monitor. That's <laughs> on the what monitor. you pay for that. <laughs> In the yeah, Paul lot. McCartney. And, and I know how when you look up some people's birthday and it'll give their name and then out beside it it will have what they've done to remind you who they are and what year they died or whatever. When you look up like Paul McCartney, it just says. Paul McCartney. There's nothing afterwards. They just assume you know who you he should is. Know. You should know exactly who he is. My personal favorite solo artist out of the Beatles, Paul McCartney. I, I, I don't know why. Everything he did with Wings, because I think I, it's because I discovered Wings first before Beatles when I was a kid. I think I heard Wings and him before I heard the Beatles. And that's just, just my opinion, because he, uh, he had some great stuff. He did have some songs that sounded like the Beatles. Because he was part writer of all of the Beatles songs with John Lennon. Today, and we mentioned Roger Ebert and Gene Siskel earlier today uh, today as well. Today is Roger Ebert's birthday. He died in 2013. Mm. Did you know that they were split? You know, we were talking about the anniversary of of it coming out, and it was out on 4K, Star Trek The Motion Picture. I think they were split on it when it came out. One of them liked it. One of them didn't. Roger and I split on Star Trek. Roger found it fanciful and fun. I found it a bloated totally unamazing stretched version of the TV show. Roger says yes, he recommends you see Star Trek, I say no. And before the break, we said it is today, National Go Fishing Day. Hey, go fishing if you want to, I'm not going. It's just personal preference. I'm just not a big guy. I'll sit there on the boat and just relax and whatever. Mm -hmm. I'll put a I'll put bait in the water with a pole. If I don't catch anything, I don't care. Right. I'm just out there on the boat, just be quiet, you know, kick back, eat a eat a bite, drink a beverage. I don't care. Just being on the water or near the near the water or something like that. Hey, did you hear this news about Game of Thrones? We're all aware of Game of Thrones. You and I are a big Game of Thrones fan. We like the show. And the uh, the prequel show is coming out, which is set what, like two hundred years before the events something of Game like of Thrones. Time of Dragons well now or something? did you hear about this? This comes from Entertainment Weekly, and this is a site that doesn't report things frivolously. You know, it, it's it's usually true, and I've seen it in a lot of other places. A Game of Thrones sequel series is now being it's discussed behind closed doors, I think. Kit Harrington is reportedly attached to reprise his Game of Thrones role, Jon Snow, in a brand new spinoff series. The Hollywood Reporter, Entertainment Weekly, all these big sites are reporting. Uh, HBO has declined to comment, by the way. Of course, they were <laughs> at this early stage. A representative of Harrington did not immediately respond to a request either. Should the concept move forward, it would mark the first sequel show to the HBO in, uh, Emmy winning hit Game of Thrones. The series would take place after the events of the Game of Thrones, which ended in 2019. Game of Thrones saw Harrington's Jon Snow, uh, first thought to be the illegitimate child of Lord Winterfell, Ned Stark, who was played by Sean Bean. And someone did remind me the other day that Sean Bean dies in almost everything that he's in. Yeah. He just dies. He, he When he gets a role, he's like, Do I die in this? Mm hmm. Well, well no, I, national treasure. You, okay. We just go to prison. Okay. Oh, okay, bye. But I, but what you didn't see is I died in prison. <laughs> <laughs> Got shanked. I did. I did die. Yeah, they revealed. To, uh, he was uh, John Snow was revealed to be a Targaryen descent, as the offspring of Ned's sister. The creator, John George R. R. Martin, titled his book series a law a song of ice and fire and snow, and was the uh, manifestation of uh, the sun or the song of Stark, ice, and uh, the Targaryens, which are fire. So I didn't know anything. I don't know anything about the book, so I didn't read them. So I didn't know anything about the book series or any of this. Now, in the last half of the show's final season, John murdered Daenerys, who played by Amelia Clark, and was exiled uh, to the Night's Watch, where he led what remained of the Free Folk well, to settle the free lands. Exiled, that's where he wanted to go. Right. He he was kind of like, okay, yeah, exile me. Okay. Because he could have taken he could have <laughs> taken the throne. He was the, the legitimate guy. That's like exiling me exiling me into the Wizarding World of Harry Potter at Universal. Okay, yeah, just go ahead and see me there for the rest of my life. Right. Yeah, that's going to be horrible. <laughs> yeah. I really, really love it. I actually think I'd get tired of it after a while. So, In the meantime, HBO is moving full steam, as we said, ahead of House of the Dragon, which is the next 
Game of Thrones TV series, a prequel set 200 years before the events of the original drama. So so that's the name of it. I was trying to think of when it was set and what it was called. It's called House of the Dragon. So that's going to be interesting. But part of me, I don't know what I'm more excited for, the prequel show or a sequel show with Jon Snow. I'm not really sure what I want. I just want it to be well done. That's right. all I ask. That's the part I just worry about. Just make it well done. Are you just glumming onto it for nostalgia right. and you're just going to throw money at it just for the, f- or is it going to be well done? I'm worried about that with Lord of the Rings. I mean, I've seen just that one teaser trailer. I still don't know if it's going to be any good. Oh, so that hasn't even premiered yet. I wasn't keeping no, up with that. No, it's coming out later this fall. So, uh, oh, speaking of that, I have the list here. I can't believe how many, where's my list? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? I can't believe how many movies are set to come up soon. And uh, what is it? Thor, Love and Thunder is coming up quicker than I thought it was. Less than a month. Friday, June the 24th. I have the new oh, updated list here. Uh, Friday, June the 24th, The Black Phone, which with, is with Ethan Hawke. Have you seen their trailers for that? that I heard it's creepy. That looks creepy. incredibly creepy. Yeah. yeah. He's got this mask on, and then someone's in the basement, kidnapped kid, and a phone rings or something. It looks like he's taking look, his odd. persona he created for... Uh uh, for uh, Moon Knight, Moon Knight. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Ethan's like, and I keep forgetting that's Ethan Hawke and uh, and Uma Thurman's daughter in uh, Stranger Things, the girl, the 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 girl, the taller girl out mm-hmm. of the ones, the the tomboyish girl. Yeah, that's their daughter, and I keep forgetting that she looks like uh, Uma Thurman a little bit if you look at her. Uh, Elvis is being released the same day, June the twenty fourth, with uh, Austin Butler playing the title role as Elvis Presley. I've seen the trailers for that, and Tom Hanks playing Colonel Tom Parker, and he looks he he could have been in the Black Phone and looked creepy as the Black Phone uh, Ethan Hawke. He looks pretty creepy. It's that, it's that amazing the prosthetics. For Tom Parker, he just looks yeah. creepy. He looks scary. It's like I, I understand that Colonel Tom Parker was pretty scary as well. In his own right. Friday, July the 8th, Thor, Love and Thunder. I mean, that's right around the corner. I, I, for the longest time, I'm like, uh, Thor's Love and Thunder. I started hearing about it a year ago, and now it's coming out. And the newer trailers that come out make me want to see it even more. It's a Marvel, some Marvel MCU. I'm going to see it. It looks really fun. And it's fun to see uh, Zeus in it, which is uh, Russell Crowe as Zeus. And early early reports are people saying that uh, Christian Bale playing the uh, the uh, the God the killer, God killer, whatever his name is, is probably is, is going to be the best villain since Thanos in uh, in Marvel movies. It's, 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 it's like all the films, that's saying something. Say and he's a good actor, so we'll see what he does with it. It's going to be fun. I think he's going to wind up being one of those villains again, which think he thinks he's right about what he does and he's justified, and that's what's going to push it over the uh, the edge of, of believing his villainy. Thursday, September the 8th, Pinocchio, another Tom Hanks movie, is being released through Disney. Uh, live action Pinocchio. We'll see how that goes. There's been a couple of attempts at Pinocchio been attempts, yeah. that haven't made it. There was one made, I can't remember who it was, but Martin Landau played Geppetto, the, uh, yep. the guy who built Pinocchio. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know if that was a Disney movie, but it probably was. I think maybe they own Disney. Uh, yeah. Disney owns Pinocchio, so... But I, that was the one that had the kid from the Tool Time show right. playing. Yeah. The, and the Pinocchio, Pinocchio character looked kind of very, it's a wooden CGI, right. obviously, thing. But it was back when CGI was kind of early. So that one was unsatisfying. We'll see how this one does. Friday, September 9th, another version of Stephen King's Salem's Lot is being released. Now, I keep, I, I don't hear a lot about that, though. I don't know if they're not releasing anything about it or is this too far away. Alfie Woodward is in that. Remember her, the actress in... Uh, she was in uh, Star Trek First Contact. She's the lady that goes aboard the Enterprise from Earth from the past and interacts with Picard. She's a great actress. She was in Extremities with Farrah Fawcett. Very, very, very good actress. Friday, October the 14th, Halloween Ends. The Halloween series. It's called Halloween Ends. Jamie Lee Curtis is in it. And we'll see how Halloween ends. <laughs> Maybe they're putting a, a nail in it at least until maybe two or three years about that when they decided to reboot it, I guess, mm-hmm. all over again. Uh, and I haven't heard I haven't heard anything else about it. But wasn't John Carpenter thinking about working on a a, a, a sequel to something to the a, thing? To the thing? Mm-hmm. And I'm like, okay, well, there John was Carpenter's involved. But that's one of those things where it's like, well, there's been some discussion, some uh, memos floated around, and then a bunch of people wrote about it. But that doesn't mean it's actually going to happen. You know what it's it means? Just fun to think. He about. was sitting around with his friends one night while they were drinking. and He goes, "Wouldn't it be cool if I did a prequel, a sequel to the thing?" And they're like, "Yeah, that'd be cool." Anyway, what are you doing now? <laughs> That somebody overheard that from the the right. website. Quick, him, so. get it out there. Put it on the web. I'd go see it though. Carpenter was involved. You can see the thing this year in the theater again. Uh, Fathom Events. Black Adam, October the twenty first, Friday. Black Adam, the DC Comics character with Dwayne Johnson, The Rock, is being released. Uh, have 
probably absolutely zero desire to see that in a theater. I might watch it streaming on uh, HBO Max when it comes out. So zero. Don't know why. Black Panther: Wakanda Forever, Friday, November the 11th. That's the Black Panther series. They're pretty tight-lipped on it about who's playing Black the Panther and what's going on. Speaking on there, we'll have more release dates when we come back. I got a few more, and then we'll get into more stuff when we come back. Super Slurpy. Now at 7-Eleven. It's the biggest, boldest, coldest Slurpee to ever quench a thirst. It's the 32-ounce Super Slurpee. And now, 7-Eleven has a fantastic summer offer. Every Super Slurpee comes in a free plastic Superman 4, the Quest for Peace Movie Collector's Cup. Eight in all, 32 ounces of Super Slurpee and Superman 4 Movie Collector's Cups, only at today's 7-Eleven. A lot of you moms don't know there's a lot of good inside Kellogg's Pop-Tarts toaster pastries. There is? Sure. First of all, there are six Pop-Tarts inside. Six? That's good. And there's real fruit filling inside, plus a tasty pastry crust. Hey, that's good, Milton. And six vitamins and iron. Well, now, that's very good. <laughs> you see? For snacks or as part of a good breakfast, it's good to know there's a lot of good inside Kellogg's Pop-Tarts. It is offensive. Fortunately, taste is irrelevant. Hey, we're back. It's BK on the air. Happy birthday to Paul McCartney, my personal favorite Beatle. That's right. Legend. I just can't afford the uh, concerts that he puts on. I try. I thought, I mean, we were, we were going to see the Eagles a few years ago, and thank goodness I won tickets way back in the day when we first met. I won tickets off of, like, wherever we were at the time, and I'm like, when I found out how much the tickets were, I'm like, well, I'm glad I won these, because I yeah. don't think we could have been able to go see them. Can't afford <laughs> going to a concert. I want to do this right quick. I showed this picture to Alan last last show, last show last week, from uh, Fox News. Cadillac's new monster hypercar will attempt to win the Le Mans and Daytona 24-hour races. The automaker has... Reveal the new prototype racing car that it will enter into the 24 hours of the Le Mans next year. Why do I do a car story when I don't usually talk about sports and racing and car things? I'll tell you why. This car, go on, go online and look at it. It's called Cadillac's Monster Hypercar. To me, it looks just like the 1989 Batman Batmobile that Tim, of Tim Burton's Batmobile. Now, it's a prominent... It also prominently features the latest version of the Cadillac Crest on its nose, the logo transitioning from color to grayscale as part of the brand's uh, shift to becoming an all-electric automaker. This is an all-electric car, though. It's, uh, it combines the 5.5-liter V8 with a motor generator that's standard across the hypercars class and features an electric motor, the battery pack, and control electronics that turn it into a hybrid vehicle. That's what Alan is. Alan Sander is a hybrid. <laughs> he likes he likes geeky nerd stuff, but he likes sports, too. That's a hybrid, kind of, in a way. So you're, you're, the, you're the guy that could be the spy in either camp growing I up guess. in school. I can <laughs> like, infiltrate. Hey, I'll hang out with the jocks, but I'll also hang out with the with the geeks over there as well, so that's kind of cool. You're the one that everyone liked, but they wouldn't have liked you if they known you hung out with the other group, though. You well, kept that secret. I was identifying with people before it became popular. <laughs> that's right, because being being a comic book and, uh, geek now is the cool thing with all these movies saving Hollywood's butt with mm-hmm. billions of dollars of revenue. Have you gone to look at the great. worldwide all time leader at the box office? Then the movies like number one's Avatar again, again thanks to but the Chinese two movies. Yeah, is Endgame, then Titanic, yeah. then I think number four. Is it's another Marvel movie? Or oh, it's really? A comic. Okay. It's like, and if you look in the top ten, they're Marvel well Disney, thank, right? You might as well thank Marvel for. <laughs> yeah, uh, I do thank Marvel all the time. Wide yeah. box office all time. I best still sellers. contend that uh, they they released Avatar again. What was it? Just a year or two ago in China, they did a re release of it, and that added to its gross, which put Only it back. To beat Endgame, which put it back up on Endgame. So what I would want, it, what I wanted Marvel to do, and I said this on the air back then, I said Marvel, just do me a favor when one of your movies is coming up again. Sometimes they re-release the others just for fun. They're re-releasing uh, Spider-Man: No Way uh, No Way Home. Uh, I think later this month, aren't they? And, doing with extra, extra footage, scenes? with extra scenes. Yeah, they're re-releasing it. But if they were just to re-release Avengers, uh, the, the, the two last ones, the Aven- they're almost one movie: Avengers: Infinity War. Infinity, Infinity War, yeah, and then Avengers Endgame back to back as a double bill in the theater. They could pass Avatar again. I'll bet they could add to their revenue. So just do so. that. It'd be cool. And we talked about it. Uh, Avatar: The Way of Water. Let's get back to the movies here. We were talking about it before we went to a break. Wednesday, December twenty first, the new Avatar film, which again I have no interest in. I might watch it in HD at home just to see how cool the effects are, because that's about all I was looking at in the first one. How cool it looked, and that was about it. That wore thin after a while. Oh my God! Who the hell? 
cares? Nothing wrong if you like it, though. And one more uh, later this later this year is Shazam: Fury of the Gods. The Shazam sequel is coming out with the a lot of the original cast returning. So there you go. There's the updated movie list of things coming out. I did want to ah, hit on that while I was while I was doing stuff. Have you seen the trailer for the uh, Predator film that's coming out? On, I haven't yet. Um, the one you call on Prey. Hulu. Prey, the latest Predator film. It says here from Deadline, 20th Century Fox, which is, we know, is owned by Disney still, announced uh, that its action thriller Prey, marking the newest entry in the Predator franchise, will debut eventually on, I'm sorry, exclusively and eventually on Hulu in the U.S. on August the 5th, uh, unspooling as a Star Plus original in Latin America and on a Star original on Disney Plus in all other territories. So that's how it's going to be coming out. You can see it. Uh, other than Hulu, which is kind of cool. Set in the Comanche Nation 300 years ago, Prey tells the story of a young woman, Naru, a fierce and highly skilled warrior. She has been raised in the shadow of some of the most legendary hunters who roam the Great Plains, so when danger threatens her camp, she sets out to protect her people. The prey she she stalks and ultimately confronts turns out to be a highly evolved alien predator as we know who they are, with a technically advanced arsenal resulting in a vicious and terrifying showdown between the two adversaries. Now, I'm thinking, wouldn't the the Predators of 300 years ago, before they fought Arnold Schwarzenegger, wouldn't some of their tech be older, too? Would they have, like, less... Is he going to be a less... Uh, technically advanced predator than the ones we're used to seeing, I guess? I don't know. It would have to be. Says he still has equipment, but maybe it's older as well. It can't no, see you only as much ad, as you only can. advance to a point, and then you stay with that tech for the. Then you the just next stay there for the years. rest of your billions of years. We've got nothing have. more to invent. <laughs> We've invented I'm, it all. I'll admit, I'll probably watch it and stream it if it's available to watch, where I don't have to pay for it. If it's on, I'll give it a shot. Oh, I'll give it a. I'll, I'll was, give it a go. What was the name of that movie that came out about the dog uh, taking the, the the medicine across the the snow and stuff? Oh, Togo. It? Togo, which was uh, not which was not as well known a dog as Balto, the other dog that who they got made all the, movie the credit. About. Yeah, <laughs> I thought, well, you know, this looks like an interesting movie. And who starred in that? Who was the guy? Uh, Willem on, Dafoe. Willem Dafoe. I said, well, let's watch this. I mean, uh, what the heck? What, that was what? when Disney Plus first was kind of that's right new. We watched it, and I fell in love with that movie. I thought it was great. It's it was great. a big, pleasant surprise. My wife and I have watched it a couple of times since. It's so really we, good. It's great. So I'll give this Predator movie a chance. As we know, the Predator films, I won't get into the Aliens ones, but all the Predator films started in 1987 with Predator. Then in 1990, Predator 2 was released with Danny Glover and Bill Paxton. Then Predators came along in 2010 with uh, Adrian Brody, who uh, a bunch of criminals from Earth were dropped on the planet of Predators, and they were hunted. I actually, out of all the sequels to the Predator, that's my favorite one. I actually really did enjoy that one. I thought it was, was kind of, it, it wasn't fantastic, but it's actually really well done, I thought. The Predator, which came out in 2018, which I still haven't seen, directed by Shane Black, the guy that directed Iron Man 3, directed Predator. The Predator is that one, which is a sequel to Predator and Predator 2, I understand. So I need to watch and rent that. I just, I'm just waiting. Here's what happens to me. And then we got Prey coming out in 2022. Those are the Predator films. Here's here's what here's what I do. I go, you know, I haven't seen The Predator yet. So I'll go online and do a search for it. And I go, oh, okay, there it is. Where can I watch it? Click, 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 click. Oh, I have to pay for it on every channel. Well, never mind. I guess I won't watch it. I just won't watch it yet. I did that same thing. There was a movie came out about King Arthur uh, called The Green Knight that came out not too long ago in theaters. And it got some pretty good reviews because it's kind of an Excalibur weird type movie. I'm like, I want to see that. It's another – I'm a big fan of King Arthur and stuff. And I did a search for it. I'm like, okay – there it is, the Green Knight, the Green Knight, two ninety nine, five ninety nine, six ninety nine, two ninety nine. No, I guess I'll watch it later. So that's what I do now. If something's available to watch for free, that's when I watch it. I don't can't remember the last time I paid for a movie streaming online. I pay for channels. Well, you're paying for it, but I'm not paying. <laughs> well, no, I mean when I pay for an individual movie right. just to pay for it to see it. I haven't done that in I don't know how long, and I it's been a long time <laughs> since I've done it. So there you go. I do want to get into it is Father's Day weekend, by the way, and Alan and I are in that position to where we 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 can we can ce- he can celebrate Father's Day because he is one, and I sort of can. I'm a stepfather, but we don't have a dad anymore. Our dad has since moved on to that next realm of existence, and uh, we remember them, and me more so because my dad died three or four days before Father's Day, so right there near it, I'd I'd already had his Father's Day gift picked out. 
in the car, already bought it on my way to see him in the hospital, thinking, well, he's just going to go to the hospital with that little problem he's got. He'll be out in a couple hours like before, and I'll just give him his Father's Day gift, and we'll go eat or whatever, hang out. Well, that never happened because he passed away the very next day in the hospital. So, mm. And that was a that was a, a weird thing to take back to the store. Like, well, I don't need it. I'll just take it back for a refund. Can I hate the reason I'm that? doing it, but it's terrible. Was there something wrong with it? And, no, uh, my no I don't want to tell you. I'm sorry I asked. So. <laughs> But uh, but we still miss our fathers to this day. But Father's Day, wow! I thought I'd talk about, and we got another segment coming up after we go to a break. But we still we're still in <laughs> heavy into it right now. But my favorite TV television dads, and there's a lot of great ones out there. But I want to f- f- amaze you first with some wonderful Father's Day fun facts. Some of them I didn't know, and and uh, everybody's Mother's Day is much more important. But we may find <laughs> out. Yeah. Father's Day fun facts according to the U.S. Census Bureau. The necktie is the most popular of all Father's Day gifts. Is that still true? Really? I don't think, number one, I never bought my dad a tie. I don't want one, even for Christmas. Don't buy me a tie or socks. I didn't want them as a kid. Now, socks I would take now as as an adult. (laughs) Socks are okay. I can use those. But uh, I did not know that the necktie is still the... Don't you like your dads? (laughs) Even a guy that never wears a suit, you're like, I got your necktie. (laughs) Why? I don't wear suits ever. Well, that's the gift. And it's a clip-on one, even. (laughs) Oh, wow. Why would you do that? The origin of the word dad may simply be baby talk. I didn't know this. The forms dada, meaning father, originating in uh, infantile or childish speech, says the Oxford English Dictionary. And I did not know that. Did you know that? Father, dada, dada. It's supposed to be easier to say than dad. Right. And so a lot of kids will start saying mom, 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 mom. And so, see, I remember my mom to this day was like, you said dada first. I'm like, oh, "Oh, good. Like I, I had a whole. I've been living I in guilt my whole I life. I said milk. Mine was a food word. <laughs> I guess it shows too. So uh, we'll get your mother later and go to the movies. Dad, we forgot the peanut butter. Can we buy Superman peanut butter? Our brand's fine, honey. Have you ever tasted Superman peanut butter? Its strength is its great taste. Mmm, delicious, smooth and creamy, a real fresh roasted peanut flavor. It's nutritious too. <laughs> Superman peanut butter. Its strength is its great taste. Boy, did I have a dream. You always do, Paul. This time, I was an astronaut. I was. You know what my rocket was made of? A husk of corn. A husk of corn? And when I landed on the moon, the husk opened and out came... Pulse toasties. Dream paper. <laughs> Those post toasties were so crackling with fresh corn flavor, I invited the moon people to have some. Boy, what a dream. Andy, are you down to earth? Yeah, ain't be. You know, these post toasties are real good anywhere. La, 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 Luke. Luke, I am your father. La, 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 la. Aw, I've interrupted happy time. That was from Star Wars. I know. Hey, we're back. It's BK on the Air here. I wanted to let you know I turned it into a podcast after we're off the air. Just check out BK on the Air podcast. Search for that that. Put that in your search engine. You'll find it at Anchor, Spotify, YouTube, and SoundCloud. Uh, I think you'll enjoy it. We we change it a little bit, change it up a little bit. Let's go back to the Father's Day fun facts. Where was the last one? Oh, I stopped with that one. Let's go with this one. There are 1.5 billion fathers worldwide. 63.3 million of those fathers are in the United States. More Father's Day fun facts. Uh, Father's Day is the fir- the fifth largest card sending occasion in America, with almost a hundred million Father's Day cards sent each year. That's nice to know, but it's still fifth. <laughs> so, okay, so it's fifth on the list. Have a fifth <laughs> to uh, to celebrate. There you go. You look, look See, that's the, change it into something positive. Always look on the bright side of life. That's right. <laughs> I'm not going to sing any more of those lyrics. Maybe on the podcast I will, but I won't. Only 50% of all Father's Day cards are purchased for dads. Nearly 15% of Father's Day cards are purchased for husbands. I didn't know this. Other categories include grandfathers, sons, brothers, and uncles. So, yeah, there you go. That's not bad. Hmm. The Father's Day card business will ring up about $780 million this year. Well, that's nice, but uh, Mother's Day will be $2.6 billion probably. <laughs> 
Not bitter. Always anything. more. According to some facts and figures, Father's Day costs less than Mother's Day. Well, of course, with an individual consumer spending ninety four point fifty four dollars and one hundred thirty eight point six, respectively, one hundred thirty eight dollars. So that's yeah. That's if the other fact was true, why wouldn't that be? Famously, Mark Twain said the following about his father. Quote, when I was a boy of 14, my father was so ignorant, I could hardly stand to have the old man around. But when I got to be 21, I was astonished at how much he had uh, he had learned in seven years. Yep. Unquote. I love that. I love that Mark Twain quote. That is <laughs> That's brilliant. Funny. Because every teenager thinks their parents That's, are stupid. Yes. What do you know? That's you don't funny. get it. Yep. By the time they turn 21 and they get it, they're like, oh, wow, dad's kind of smart. You, you and I know about how much dad was right about, you know, especially yeah. after they're gone. We're it, really, we're, we're still learning from our dads. Usually. It wasn't that the dad was dumb. It was the <laughs> no. kid was dumb. That's right. <laughs> or just ignorant. Ignorant. You're just ignorant. Everybody's like, you're stupid, dumb, or ignorant. I'm like, well, the difference between being, okay, stupid and dumb are usually the same thing, but being ignorant is not necessarily a bad thing. I could be ignorant about a lot of things. Like if I'm in a city like Chicago or New York and I walk down the wrong road and get robbed or something because it's a really bad neighborhood or something, that just meant I was ignorant of that area. Right. That's that's not being ignorant stupid. Ignorant means the that's lack being of ignorant. knowledge. Right. So there's that doesn't mean that you're stupid. I'm all three. Sometimes. <laughs> sometimes. The idea of Father's Day was conceived by Sonora Smart Dodd, who wanted a special day to honor her father, William Smart, a widowed Civil War veteran. Uh, left to raise six children on his own. So that's kind of where it started. The idea for it was way back during the Civil War. Now, it wasn't until 1972 that Father's Day was officially made a U.S. holiday when President Richard Nixon helped set aside the third Sunday in June Think for about it. dads. We were both born, and there wasn't an official there Father's no Day Father's yet. Father's Day when we were born. Or at least not federally yeah. recognized. Even my sister, she was born in 69, so that was, yeah, even after her. So, so a lot of kids that we know, millennials, don't know a world without Father's Day, right. obviously. Uh, not everyone was happy with the idea of making Mother's Day and Father's Day separate holidays. In the 1920s and 30s, there was a movement to get rid of Mother's Day and the and the uh, and the other one, Father's Day celebrations, and instead join the two holidays as a unified Parents' Day. Robert Spear, known also as Robert Spiro. A philanthropist and children's radio entertainer saw the holidays as a division of respect and affection for parents, especially during the time when Father's Day hadn't officially been recognized nationwide. Hey, I don't give me a break. Why not let's let's keep it separate? Have a Mother's Day and Father's Day. What's wrong with that? Why do people want to overthink everything and put it all on one, one day? That's what they did to my sister and I growing up. My birthday is in February like seventeenth. And my sister's was March the 4th. So they're like, let's just have both your birthday parties on February the 29th oh. or 28th. I'm like, why? My why? brother's why November 8th. I'm November 18th. And we had forever. We're going to do a combined birthday. <laughs> now, as a kid, you'll, you'll we like hate it that. more. No. No, no, no I mom, won't. <laughs> mom, dad, you like it more. Because mm-hmm. now, when you were older, we're like, oh, we understand why they did that. Now, oh, I already We're told older you. with kids, that, yeah. This, this is like my pet peeve that goes <laughs> along with it. My birthday being the 18th, very close to Thanksgiving, which right. is in the holiday ramp up yeah, season. Don't you hate that? It's like your. Here's like your, your birthday Christmas gift. It's like what? I got cheated out of everything here. What? Why? Because I was born <laughs> close to a major holiday. Right. You feel weird about buying That's a terrible. birthday gift and then a Christmas gift? Yep. Well, it's combined. Yeah, and people don't understand when I say my birthday is in the worst month of the year. It's February. Number one, it's after the first year in Christmas. It's during a month when there's nothing but cold weather and crap going on. Oh, wow, Valentine's Day. Big deal. Who cares about that one? My, my, I have the worst birthday month holiday. ever. Yeah, worst month for birthdays ever. I hate that one. I would love for my birthday to be as far from Christmas as possible. That way, growing up, I could have oh, yeah. you know presents on My you know, wife's is July, out. like Christmas in July. Oh, yeah. It's six See, months away from Christmas. Great. I was like, you know, if I had been born in July, you would have been going here's your christmas birthday present <laughs> isn't that great yeah here you go <laughs> did you spend twice as much <laughs> no <laughs> that's right how how is this oh, a deal geez, for me that doesn't make any sense um yeah favorite fathers i want to hit on that okay we love tv tele- i love watching growing up tv fathers growing up and i and i had to whittle this one down and just because i left one off the list doesn't mean i don't like them or think they were a a bad dad on television it's just this is my favorite five growing up Number five, uh, Herman Munster on the Munsters. <laughs> Who cares what he looked like? That was one of the best dads on television because he loved Eddie Munster. He loved his family. It was just basically a regular old guy that just happened to look like Frankenstein. <laughs> he was a great father. If you've never seen the Munsters, check it out. He was in and, and uh, Fred Gwynn did a great 
job acting as Herman Munster. A tight cast him, unfortunately. Next up, Charles Ingalls on Little House on the Prairie. Again, great, great father figure on a on a great television show. Take away whether you like the show or not. Oh, it's a hokey show about growing up on the prairie. I'm like, well, okay, it was from a book series. But uh, he was a great dad character, great mm-hmm. father on the show from what he did. I don't think he did anything, anything really wrong. I think he was like one of the most perfect dads on television. Great dad. I agree with that one. Next up, Mike Brady on The Brady Bunch. I mean, that's one of the earliest shows that showed if two people together. Well, yeah. <laughs> he could still be a dad, though. Uh, but uh, knowing that the dad he was with three kids and bringing in another family, this is one of the earliest shows that had extended families. They were both blended, they, blended. blended families with three kids and th- that weren't related to each other at all. And uh, they both had they had to make it work around a sitcom, and it was great. And if you listen to the lessons that he gave, especially the guy that played him in the Brady Bunch movie, I uh, can't remember. The guy was in the office space. Right. The, mm. the, I didn't even want to need those reports. Mm. But Gary Cole. That's it. Gary Cole. Gary Cole. He sounded, if you closed your eyes, you're like, he sounds just like Robert Reed talking. How did he do that? He was great. And Shelley Long was great as uh, Carol Brady, too, mm. in the movies. But Robert Reed, listen to the life lessons and the things that he would teach the kids and tell them about, well, you shouldn't have, you know, you shouldn't have done this, Cindy, because you know, if you tattle on someone, you're not only tattling on them, but you're tattling on yourself, too. It's not good. All the lessons he gave them. So Mike Brady makes the, the list. Next up, John Walton Sr. on the Waltons. Hmm. To me, Ralph Waite was the was the head of that household in the Waltons. He made all the decisions. He worked in the sawmill, and it was during the Depression. And that show, what a father he was to, 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 to pull all that together and sacrifice everything he did on the Waltons. If you've never seen the Waltons, brush up on it again. It's available streaming on uh, Freebie, the channel that was originally called um, IMDb. IMDb. Now Freebie's out there, and it's, <laughs> I'm watching Dragnet and, and Adam-12 and a lot of stuff. But John Walton on the Waltons is my next number two favorite TV dad of all time. Well, my number one TV dad, it's probably going to be no big surprise. <clears throat> What's this about rules for pa's and sons? This first. Hmm. The 75 cent rule. The 75 cent rule. I don't, uh, I don't believe I ever heard of that one. Well, and that's what I figured. Mm. What it is, Pa, is that nowadays kids get 75 cents a week allowance instead of 25 cents. 75 cents? That's a lot of money. And in a year's time, I'd come to see there's 52 weeks in a year. It comes to around $40 a year. <laughs> That's an awful lot of money for a young. They get it, Pa. They do, huh? And they don't have to work for it like I do. Hmm. Well, who is this, uh, this they you keep talking about? Oh, Arnold Winkler and everybody. Arnold Winkler. I don't believe I know him, do I? They're new from Raleigh. Oh, I see. And, and the Raleigh rules say, uh, say 75 cents and no work, huh? I guess. Mm-hmm. You want it straight, don't you? Mm-hmm. Okay, here it goes. There are no rules for pa's and sons. Uh, it's as simple as this. Each uh, each mother or father raises his boy or girl, as the case may be, the way that uh, he thinks is best. And I think it's best for you to get a quarter and work for it. You see, when you give something, in this instance, cleaning the garage, and you get something in return, like a quarter, well, that's the greatest feeling in the world. You do feel good after working, don't you? Uh-huh. Good and tired. <laughs> well, as uh, as you get bigger, well, you'll be doing more and more work for more and more return, and that good feeling will get bigger. Do you understand what I mean? I think so. Good. I'm not going to get the 75 cents. <laughs> and I have to work for the 25. Right. It's all clear to you? Yeah. The bigger you get, the tireder you get. <laughs> well, uh, you just you just think about that for a while. Do I have to? Don't you want to think about it? It makes me kind of sad. (laughs) Well, the thing to do when you're feeling sad is to shoot for the good feeling. Clean the garage. Right. It's long ball. (laughs) So, yes, Andy Taylor from The Andy Griffith Show, probably my favorite. It is my favorite. He's my favorite dad, TV dad of all time. You had a good list. That's just one instance of The Andy Griffith Show. Uh, interaction between him and Opie. There's a lot of those as Opie grow, grew older. When they got into the last season of the show, Ron Howard was up like a, a preteen already in the color episodes, and he mm-hmm. was older. And you got to see him grow up <laughs> on the Andy Griffith show. And uh, him and him and uh, his dad, the sheriff, they had a lot of interaction. And uh, 
my favorite dad. You got it. You got a couple of good dads before we go to the top. Of I would say here? taking away the actor. I always loved the Cosby dad. Oh yeah, he was great. He, he was had one of my great life lessons. He was funny. He did up. things with his kids. They yep. played. Oh yeah, and I think that's what a dad needs. My to be honorable involved. mention. My honorable mention is Fred Sanford with Lamont. He may have, <laughs> he may have done a lot of crappy things, but at the end, he always had a heart on the episodes, and he always showed that he loved Lamont. BK on there. Happy Father's Day to everybody. It's BK on the air. Oh dear, I think he's going to recite. <clears throat> Um, Ibbity bibbity sibbity sab. <laughs> Ibbity bibbity canal boat. <laughs> Dictionary? Down the ferry. <laughs> Mary, Mary, quite contrary. <laughs> um, fuzzy Wuzzy was a bear. <laughs> fuzzy Wuzzy lost his hair. <laughs> Scuba do and scuba die. That chicken's not too young to fry. <laughs> life is real, life is earnest. If you're cold, turn up the furnace. <laughs> I, I thank you. Yeah.